Have you ever wondered what data archives do and how they help to preserve social science research data for generations to come? My name is Jonas Recker and I'm a digital preservation specialist at the Gezes Data Archive for the Social Sciences. In this video you will learn what a data archive is and which functions archives typically perform when they preserve data. So what happens when a researcher submits data to an archive? How is it processed? How is it stored? And which steps are taken to prepare it for reuse? After shedding some light on these questions, the second part of this video will introduce standard terminology and concepts that digital archive folks use when they talk about these functions and workflows. This terminology comes from the reference model for an open archival information system. And when you work in an archive, you will sooner or later encounter this terminology. So this video can help you be prepared. What is a data archive? According to the Wikipedia definition, an archive is an accumulation of historical records or the physical place they are located. Archives contain primary source documents selected for permanent or long-term preservation on grounds of their enduring cultural, historical or evidentiary value. In a data archive, the source documents are research data and nowadays they typically come in a digital format. These could be CT scans in medicine, satellite images in meteorology, or video recordings of interviews in psychology. The SESTA data archives have a very strong focus on the quantitative social sciences. The data they preserve is typically created in formats associated with statistical software such as SPSS, STATA, or R. One of the reasons why we preserve data is their value for verifying or replicating published research results. But this data can also be repurposed to answer entirely new research questions. To support these goals, data archives have accepted the responsibility of ensuring that the data remains usable and understandable, regardless of technological changes or changes in the research methods and practices of the target user community. To fulfill these responsibilities, Many archives have adopted standard preservation workflows and procedures. This video will now give an overview of these workflows. The first step, accept data. It seems obvious, but first of all, data archives accept data submitted to them by a depositor. This process often begins with communication between an archivist and a researcher who wants to submit data. Once a submission has been received, an archivist typically checks the submission against a set of selection criteria to determine if the data can be included in the collection. This could, for example, be dependent on the data format, the research method used, or the research discipline. The second step, prepare the data for archiving. If the submission is in scope, further checks are carried out to determine if the data and documentation are complete, if the quality of the data is sufficient, and if there are any legal or ethical issues for example, relating to anonymization or and intellectual property rights. If the submission meets all the criteria, further checks are carried out to determine if the data and documentation are complete, if the quality of the data is sufficient, and if there are any legal or ethical issues, for example, relating to anonymization and intellectual property rights. In the case of social science survey data, for example, archivists might look for correct and consistent labeling, correct question routing, and de-identification risks. Often archives normalize files. This means that submitted data are converted to a preservation file format if they are not in this format already. For example, a Microsoft Excel file might be converted to a CSV format for archiving. To prepare the data for archiving, archivists also enhance and create metadata and documentation that describe the data to make it findable and understandable. The third step Store the data safely. When all preparations have been completed, the data is transmitted to permanent storage. This could be a dedicated in-house archive server, a tape library, or cloud storage. To keep the data safe in storage, archives must have mechanisms in place to control access to the data, for example with authorization and identification procedures, and by restricting physical access to the server rooms. Safely storing data also includes measures for backup and disaster preparedness, such as disaster recovery plans and redundant copies of the data and metadata in different locations. The fourth step, make the data findable. As mentioned in the beginning, 
We archive data to enable researchers to replicate findings and to repurpose that data to answer new research questions. For this to be possible, researchers have to be able to discover the data. Therefore, archives usually provide catalogs such as the SESTA data catalog. Often, metadata is provided for harvesting by search engines such as Google, making data even more widely findable. Persistent identifiers such as DOIs or URNs are offered to make data uniquely identifiable and citable. Persistent identifiers such as DOIs or URNs are offered to make data uniquely identifiable and citable. Step 5 is making the data accessible for reuse. Researchers not only have to be able to find data, archives also have to make it possible for them to access the data. For archives, this means they have to set up access conditions in line with legal regulations and ethical standards. They must also have infrastructure in place that makes access possible. This could be online access directly from the catalog, or for data that is very sensitive, access could be provided in a protected on-site room. Step number six, keep the data usable. As mentioned earlier, data archives seek to preserve data for use in the future, regardless of technological change or changes in the research practices of the served community. This means, that archives have to monitor their environment very closely. Are there any changes expected to the software needed to render the data? Or is standard terminology evolving in ways that might impact the ability to understand the data in the future? If this is the case, the archive has to plan measures to ensure that data continues to be usable and understandable in spite of these changes. For example, by migrating the data into a new file format or by updating the metadata. In the digital preservation community, much of the terminology that we use comes from the OACE model, the reference model for an open archival information system. The OACE model provides us with a common vocabulary that is especially useful when we communicate about our workflows and processes with other archives. Therefore, to conclude this video, we are going to map the steps that we just introduced onto the OACE terminology. OACE is a generic model of an archive. It was created in the 1990s by the CCSDS, the Consultative Committee for Space Data Systems, and today is an ISO standard. It describes archive components, functions, and processes in a very abstract manner and is neither domain nor software specific. Steps 1 and 2, accept data and prepare data for archiving in the OAS model are subsumed under the term ingest. Ingest is the interface between the depositors and the archive. Step 3, store data safely, is referred to as archival storage in the OAS model. This is where data is permanently kept and stored securely. Step 4, make data findable, is called data management in OAS. This is where metadata are stored and managed so that data can be found. Step 5, make the data accessible for reuse, is referred to as access in the OAS model. Access ensures that users can send queries to the archive and receive data in response. Step 6. Keep the data usable. In the OAS model, these responsibilities are fulfilled by preservation planning and administration. They monitor the technical environment and the user community and plan and implement any measures necessary to mitigate the risk of change. In this video, you learned what a data archive is and how it helps to keep data usable for future generations of researchers. To find out more, visit cesta.eu. This video is produced by the Consortium of European Social Science Data Archives. For more information on CESTA, please visit www.cesta.eu.